right? There's still something even easier. Put the price up. Put the price up. <laughs> put the price up. And that's the place we start. Put your prices up now. Put the prices up now. When you go back Monday morning, that's the first thing you need to do. Let's talk about that, because that sounds like, it's easy for you to say, John, you're not running the business. It's easy for you to say, John, you're not going to have to look customers in the eye when they say, oh, that's got a bit more expensive. Yeah, well, let's take a look at some of that. Um, just to get us thinking about things, I'm going to ask you a question. You sell widgets. You buy them at £10, you sell them at 15 You sell 10 of them a week. You've got two options. You can either increase your prices by 10%, but the price of that will be that 20% of your business no longer buys from you. You lose that volume. Or you can drop your prices by 10%, but increase your volume 20%, because that nice, new, cheap price attracts all that extra business. So, everyone's hands up. Yeah, come on, everyone in the room, hands up to start with. Put your hand down if you think option A is the best option. Right, that's interesting. So most people think that option B is the best option. Is that right? No, no have I got it the wrong way around? Yeah. Most people think option A is the best option. Okay, let's uh, find out which was the best option. Obviously some people have been doing some quick arithmetic in their minds. Our as is, you know all the data, what we buy them for, how many we sell, but the important lines on there are how much money we take, how much our goods have cost, and therefore how much profit we've got left. We're making 50 pounds. If we put our prices up, yeah, the volume goes down, but our cost of sales goes down as well. So in actual fact, we end up making more profit. Yeah? Uh, we lower our prices. Sure, yeah, more money's coming through the door. Absolutely. But our cost of sales is higher. Sorry? You become a busy fool. Thank you very much. You become a busy fool because there's plenty of room. Please join us. Because, yeah, your profits have dived. Your profits have dived. Now, I talk to quite a number of customers who automatically always go for that. They think more customers, more revenue, that has to be the right thing. They forget the cost of sales side. And the actual fact, putting prices up is not necessarily a bad thing to do. Now, a bit of a fancy graph here, but let's explain what it's all about. This is percentage change in price, yeah? So the red size means you're discounting on a price that you've got. The black size means you're putting your prices up. The vertical is the proportion of business, the percentage of business that you will either need to do or can afford to give away, depending on whether you're raising a price or lowering a price. So for example, if you're making one pound profit, sorry, if, you're, if you decide to discount a pound on an item that you're selling, every time you sell that item, you've lost a pound compared to what you would have done if you'd carried on selling it at the same price as before. You're gonna need to have to sell more of them. And that's what this line shows. As you discount, sure enough, the need to recoup sales goes up as well. Now that varies depending on your original margin. And what's interesting here is how if you're working at lower margins, okay, markups I should say, so this is the amount you take your cost price and multiply it by to get your selling price. If you're down in the 20 to 30% range of markups, look how quickly those lines rise. Look how much sales volume you quickly need to add on to your sales the moment you start selling less than you reasonably could do. So the example I gave, a 10% discount, you need to sell 43% more units to make the same level of profit as you were before you applied the discount. Nearly half as much again. What apparently was a simple, I'll just knock 10% 10, 10 off in price to secure the business, has, laid, has um, lumbered you with, the, with a huge sales task. Yeah? There's also another way of looking at that. Let's say you're selling the same product as another guy or a girl at a different part of town. Yeah, exactly the same product and you think, I know, I'm going to be a shrewd cookie on this. I'm going to sell a little bit less than they do because I'll attract the business. Hold on a minute. How much faster are you going to have to run to make the same amount of money as they are? A lot faster. Yeah? To make the same profit, assuming the volumes, 
you're going to have to sell 43% more units to make the same level of profit as your competitor. So when you see people around you dropping their price, don't think, oh God, I've got to drop mine too. Think, hang on a minute, yeah, I'm not playing that game. They're going to have to run a hell of a lot faster to keep up with me because they're giving away all that profit. If you look at it the other way, yeah, if I increase my prices 10%, on the margin for the widgets example, I could afford to lose 23% of my business, 23% of my volume, before raising my price became a bad idea. Yeah? Is that likely? Now I can't tell you if it's going to happen or not, only you know whether it's likely or not because you know your customers and how sensitive they are to pricing and all the rest of it. But I'd say it was probably quite a large number and would certainly put it in the balance. And one of the good things about this kind, of, this kind of chart, this kind of diagram, is it takes away the emotion, yeah? I can't possibly put my prices up. Customers will be scared away by the fact that they are. Well, yeah, sure, some might be, but will it be that many? Now, the only thing to do when, when, um, when selling products is to sell them as, as low as I reasonably can. Well, hang on a minute. Look how much harder you're having to, make, having to work to make the same level of profit. Sell at what the market will bear. Not at what you think. Sell at what the market will bear. So that's how it might, how raising prices doesn't necessarily affect your business as you may think, although many people in the room seem to have got the right message, which is great. Here's some other interesting stuff. You know we do the retail price comparison every year, yeah? and we've been running it a few years now. We, use, we can use that information to give some rather interesting insight to what's called price elasticity. Yeah? That's the degree to with which price varies according to price. Sorry, sales varies according to price. Is it very sensitive? Is it less sensitive? And broadly speaking, you'd expect a relationship that looks something like that. In other words, the cheaper things get, the more, you, the more that they will sell. It's the law of supply and demand. Now, I'm not saying it's that precise line, I'm just saying the relationship says it moves from this, tri this quadrant to that quadrant. And you might expect something like that if you looked at the data from the retail price comparison. Because remember, the retail price comparison asks for price and sales satisfaction. Yeah, that's a measure of how well things are actually selling. That's what we found. And then this year's, which isn't plotted, we found a line that is pretty much in the middle of the two. Lines that are pretty flat. In other words, the elasticity, the price elasticity of the products and services that you generally sell is flat. Change the price and it doesn't do much to how much you will sell. Yeah? That doesn't mean you can't double it. Don't look at doubling it or trebling it. Yeah? We're talking about fairly small differences and I would say probably in the order of say 10 to 15 yeah? percent is pretty flat. So in other words, if you discount it's going to have no impact on increased volume at all. You will, we know already that it's going to have an effect on losing money. Well, now we know from a market perspective what customers will bear, because this is information about how well things sell at different prices. We know from a market perspective, going cheap doesn't work. And indeed, when we've looked at, we also look at overall sales satisfaction and price performance for different customers, some of our most unhappy customers, according to the retail price comparison, are the ones that are consistently selling the lowest. Comes as no surprise, yeah? They're not in getting any extra volume and all they're doing is making their life extremely hard for themselves. This also says the opposite. Put up your prices and the market will be incredibly resilient. Now again, don't double, don't treble. We're talking about the 5 10%, maybe 15% at the maximum. But your pricing is pretty resilient. So, a lot of stuff there about why you can put prices up. Yeah? A lot of information that says it's not going to affect your business like you may think. Um, and the market information that says customers may not respond like you'd expect them to. They're likely not to. That's why you can put prices up. Now, I'm going to talk about why you must start putting prices up, which is a different angle. So, in every buying decision, a customer is asking the same question. Yeah? Am what I'm about to pay for, or is what I'm about to pay for, worth what I'm going to be giving up in order to get it? Now, this isn't a conscious question necessarily, 
But it's, a, it's an equation, it's a, it's, a, it's a question that's going on in people's minds. If you think about it, yeah, I can come to you and I can buy an ink for the sake of argument for £15. Or I can go to another store that's just over the road and buy the same for 10 Identical product, £5 price difference. Yeah? I weigh up the inconvenience, the price. We've even got the service level and the type of person selling behind the counter. There's no difference there, let's say. And I'll say, in actual fact, I'll probably go over the road and buy it. Yeah? Or I could choose to go online and buy it even cheaper. But the price is, of course, on that, I will have to get it the next day or possibly even later, depending on the deal I go for. Yeah? I can choose to buy the ink from you or, well, there's no other shop for 10 miles. But if I, did, if I went to that shop, I could buy it for, for 10 or 12 pounds. Is the inconvenience worth that journey to me? Or are there other things at play? I need it now, five pounds ain't that much, I'm going to buy it. You get my drift. This is what's going on in people's heads. So, yes, I'm not saying they're saying that in their mind, but they're, they're weighing up a lot of factors that effectively mean that that's what's going on in their head. Worth, as I've kind of started talking about, is a mix of three things. Perceived value. It's a blend of the absolute price of the item that you're selling, the quality of that item, and everyone appreciates that as you increase quality, price tends to rise. Yeah? And the level of service that goes with that. Now, if you think about it, that's, that's all kinds of things. That could be simplistically and perhaps, perhaps uh, ridiculously, you know, there are always three people at my counter and whenever you come in, Mr. Customer, and I serve you, you will always receive personal attention right from the moment you walk in until the job is finished. Well, there'll be a price associated with that, wouldn't there? Yeah? It could also be things as simple as the service level is, well, I want to buy from you as a retailer because I know you're on the high street, I know where you are, and if there's something wrong, I can come and sort it out with you rather than buy it from the internet where it's all got to be done through post and all the rest of it. Yeah? The service level would also be things like yeah, your guarantees and your assurances about should anything go wrong, I'm here, don't hesitate to bring it back, all of those sorts of words that go with it and the general feel that you create as a retailer or as a, as a business in what people will expect of you. So the price that you actually charge for something is a blend of those three things. Ultimately, that's the equation, yeah? Do the benefits of what I've got, I'm getting outweigh the costs? Now, with that idea in mind, McKinsey, you may have may or not heard of them, they're management consultants, strategic management consultants, big one of the prestige groups did some work some years ago and related perceived price against customer perceived benefits. And they did it for brands, different brands, and by virtue different products within brands. And they found a very, very tight correlation, a relationship between those things. Yeah? Premium brands offering high levels of customer perceived benefits always came in as much more highly priced than less premium and budget brands. And this was a remarkably tight relationship. Remarkably tight relationship. The interesting thing about it is it's not defined by the businesses, it's defined by what the market will bear. Because if you think about it, if a business says, well, in actual fact, we're going to try and play down in this space, we're going to give loads of benefits, I'm going to sell discounted Bentleys, yeah, at £30,000 rather than 120, people are going to go, hang on a minute, there's something wrong with it. That is just ridiculously cheap. That's too low. We don't trust you. They won't succeed in selling. So that line holds because of that value perception in people's minds. Now, here's an interesting thing. Let's put Curry's on there. Let's put our dear friends Curry's and PC World on there. Let me ask you a question at this point. Are you more highly or lowly priced? Are you more expensive or cheaper than PC World? Lower. Lower than PC World, right? Higher. What one lower? Higher. You've got a higher, fair enough. Definitely higher. Trying to be higher. Good, Definitely okay, higher. fair enough. Higher. Any other lowers? Touchdown Pardon? Touchdown 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 Touchdown. You're on par with them, fair enough. Okay. The e is the cheapest. Yep. PC World is the highest because people go to PC World because mm -hmm. it's easier and they know it, they trust them. So if I price myself in between the two, mm -hmm. then I stand a good chance of mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't agree with you there. I mean, most people who come in our shop hate pieces. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested in the idea about people trusting PC World. I think there's an issue in there about convenience and, and location that means people go there because they're in easy places to get to and they don't know where you are. Yeah, and there's the range to take into it as well. But people typically say, and some people, one person in the room has said, well, I tend to be lower, I might be on par. Now, let me ask you another question. Are you better or worse than PC World in terms of everyone says they're better, right? Well, then, if you're better, yeah, why aren't you more expensive? Why aren't you more expensive? PC World is so successful, it's very difficult to compete with You can't compete on price. No, you can't. No, and that's, that's the point. Why? Why is, why is that happening? It's because customers don't get that. That's your challenge. That's your challenge. It's how do you communicate? How do you present a business that's better than PC World, that does all the things that you do, you're not making them up, that does all the things that you do? And I'll come on to that in just a moment. So yeah, if you're cheaper than PC World, you're worse. That's the message. Customers perceive you as worth less because this price value equation is going on in people's heads and they're coming to you for other reasons. Yeah, it's cheaper. Although people in here are saying that they don't price lower, which is fabulous because you are better. So the purpose of price, when I ask this in the instant profit workshop that I run, the purpose of price I put out, most people say, to make a profit. Most people say things like to motivate purchase and by that they mean will you sell cheap. Yeah? Price isn't about that at all. Price is about the worth of your offer. It's about creating an impression. It's the final thing, the underlining thing that brings together everything about you and the products and services that you sell. The quality of image that you present, the nature of your service and what you sell. That's what purpose, price is for. And then as a consequence of that, you can recover your costs and ideally make a profit. Yeah? Why do I put it like that? This is all about what the market will bear. Now we all know very well there are some products where it's virtually impossible to make any money at all. Yeah? And there are other products that you can sell at pretty good margins, very high margins. Yeah? And that's why I always say to people, don't price at what you think it's worth, price at what the market will bear. So that means if you can buy a cable, for pence or a few quid, and you know the market will pay 10, 15, 20 pounds for it, then sell it at that price. Yeah? Because you need, in the mix, to make up for the things that you're having to sell extremely tight. Here's a couple of quotes from people um, who have taken the advice on putting prices up. One from... Uh, Gary McEwen at Gage Computers, and one from David Marchant about his PC cleanup prices. Okay, putting prices up will not kill your business. These will all be made available, by the way, on our website afterwards, these materials. Okay, but how do I prove I'm better? I'm not really comfortable with this idea that I'm just gonna put my prices up and that'll be the end of it. You know, my service level, um, what do I do, what do I do? How do I show that I'm better? Right, I'm gonna give you one example here. This is just one example, but it, it plays to all the different parts of how you show and prove that you're worth more. And we're gonna do it by looking at a PC health check, as I've called it, or a clean up, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and your marketing, your advertising, for the sake of argument, could be a poster or a leaflet or an icon on your website, something like that that just says that, so those sorts of words, yeah? Computer's running slow, we'll come and get a health check, 50 quid. Well, that's one way of presenting your offer, isn't it? But how does that show that you're actually worth anything? Well, you can do things like that. You add in so many simple words, so many simple words that just speak to the fact that you're doing more than just squirreling around in the back of your shop and fiddling about and hoping you'll make it run faster that you're gonna follow a set procedure, there's gonna be 20 points in it, and the health check's going to be done by an expert. Yeah? Small words, aren't they? 
small words, they have a huge impact. Remember, you have to sell your market always, and we're going to talk about this later in the day in my last session, you have to be thinking about customers who have never used you before. Completely new people to your business and how you would get inside their head and help them understand, yeah, in actual fact, Jim seems a pretty good guy. Seems to know his stuff. I like his style. I seem to be able to trust him. 50 pounds. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable price for what I'm being offered. Because remember, the other thing about services is they're intangible. Yeah, what are they? How do I know it's been done? Yeah? Okay, another thing in and around doing your 20-point check checklist for a health check would be having your diagnostic sheet. Now, I'm not telling you about this so that you use it and make sure you're doing the job right, although there is value in that and consistency in productivity terms. This is all about using this kind of thing as a sales prop. So when people come in and say, I want to do that health check, you go, oh, yeah, of course. You know, uh, well, this is our standard check sheet. And you'll see whether they're interested or not. If they're not, you can put it away. Some people will go, oh, what's that all about then? Well, these are the sorts of things that we do. Yeah? We do this, we do that, we do the other. Oh, I didn't know you did that. That's interesting. You're giving people a sense. You're showing people you know your stuff by virtue of what you will do. You have specified it as a specification. Yeah? And yes, you can use it. You can fill it out. You can use it to run the job. And when the person comes back afterwards and you hand the work over, you can show it to them. But from the point of view of making more money from the next customer you meet <coughs> and being more effective at selling, grabbing that sale, these are the kinds of things that will help you do that. You should also, on those sorts of things, if you've got any kind of qualifications, yeah, put those badges on, whatever they are. Yeah, put them on. I put some industry ones that may or may not be relevant. There are other qualifications are available. Yeah, but put them on if you're going to use this kind of sheet and you're going to be using it with customers. Put them on that sheet because you are communicating. Every time you slip that piece of paper in front of a customer, they're seeing those badges more confidence that you're worth the money that they're going to pay. Now here's an example, it's from PC Medic in Mansfield. It's a leaflet on uh, Windows 8. It's slightly out of date, I know Windows 10 is here, but you could do exactly the same thing, simple hints and tips for how to keep a healthy computer. And there, all in one go, you have a range of things that you have done that have played directly to your service level that have said, this person knows their stuff, yeah? this person can be trusted, and they've helped me because they've provided me with information. Of course, if you create something like this, somebody might come into your shop and just buy, I don't know, DVDs or a mouse or, or a cable. There's no reason why you can't slip one of those in. Mention, oh, by the way, you've got a personal computer, haven't you? Yes, yes, yes. Well, here's some free hints and tips on how to keep it running healthy. Yeah? Just simple stuff that people could do for themselves. Now, here's another angle on um, how to make more money from the next customer you see. And that's this concept of productizing your services. Services are intangible. Yeah? They don't exist in boxes. You can't touch them. It's a piece of work that you're going to do. Yeah? The problem with that is it's intangible. How do I know that you're actually doing it? What is it that you're going to do? I can't see anything. So think about it notionally as putting your PC health check in a box. Yeah, you could almost have a box and say, right, this is my PC health check, and on the back, here's my 20 steps. Yeah, that's the product. That's what you're going to buy. Because tangible is credible. And the other thing about products is products have set prices. Yeah, I'm looking at the product. There it is. I can see that. I've immediately got a price value equation going on in my head. How much is it worth? 50 pounds. That's what you charge when you sell one of those, isn't it? Yeah, you don't vary it according to whether I look like I've got lots of money or not. It's on your, this box of PC health check is on your counter. That's and the other the thing is different grades of service. Yeah, we run a variety of different health checks. Yeah, this is just remember I'm talking about a health check. We run a variety of different health checks. These are the different levels of service. Yeah, I can fix 99% of your software problems with a bronze. If you want me to clean it as well, which I'd be happy to do because quite often computers are very dirty inside and we do find people who don't look after their computers quite often come in because things are overheating, yeah? then you can go for our silver. For gold, have you ever had the power supply tested? 
you do realize, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah, we can arrange a pat test. Finally, we'll do all of that and we'll install full antivirus at a discounted price. Okay? So everything you do, you've started to charge for. You've introduced new services. You could even have optional add-ons like a RAM upgrade, but flash drive being included that you could all mention at the same time, depending on where the customer was. And what you're saying to them is, is well, you know, you'll probably, a bronze will probably do, but we can do these other things too. And by the way, with speed problems, how much RAM have you got on this? Oh, it's this big, well, you know, it might be advisable to think about an optional RAM upgrade. It would cost this. So you're doing a multiple things at once. You're giving them the chance, because when you, produce, when you present a ladder like this, people upsell themselves. People upsell themselves. You need three, at least a bronze, silver and gold. If you give them two, they'll probably usually opt for the lowest one. If you give them three, they'll usually go for the middle. So the way to make more money is just about some clever price positioning in that, which is that your standard price that you usually charge for a health check is the bronze, yeah? and an extra five or 10 pounds, whatever the difference is, my suggestion is the cleaning. You might think, no, that's not appropriate, or I'd do it a different way, yeah? That the cleaning is the extra add-on. Don't do anything for free. Don't do anything for free. But if you provide this, if you productize your service, categorize it, turn it into, notionally, a set of boxes on a shelf, so that customers can see what they're buying, yeah? Given your problems, I'd suggest this. You're better at selling, it's more credible, and you give them the option to trade up. You can also, as I said, introduce these optional extras. Now that's just for one particular service. There are loads of other things that you do where you could apply the same set of principles. 